It is the return of the F1 Sprint and also the return of a familiar voice. We welcome you to the LX7 Formula 1 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. And it is also great to be back in the commentary booth to bring you guys the action in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, round four. Now, as we take a look at the track map, where are we going to race today? We are still in the Middle East. This is one of three races going to be contested here in the Middle East in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Track distance compiles of 6.174 kilometers with the full throttle being around 75%. Drivers are expected to reach around 335 kilometers per hour around the Jetta Corniche circuits and as well as the 27 turns that compile the whole track. We're just moments away from starting the first F1 sprint here in the LX7 Fantasy season. But first, let's take a look at how they line up for today's F1 sprint. We got Logan Sargent lined up in P20 alongside Nick DeVries in P19 in the back of the field with Oscar Piastri and Lance Stroll side by side in P18 and P17. Kevin Magnussen and Carlos Sainz with the penalty in P15 he will start in today's sprint. Esteban Ocon in P14 alongside Sergio Perez in P13 who did not have the best of qualifying performances as of late. P12 for Nico Hulkenberg and P11 for Guan Yu Zhu. P10 will consist of Alexander Albon in the Williams and Valtteri Bottas and P9 in the Alfa Romeo. P8 will go to Lewis Hamilton and Yuki Tsunoda with an impressive P7 in qualifying. Lando Norris in the McLaren P6 alongside Charles Leclerc P5. As we get to the first two rows, Max Verstappen will start P4 with a grid penalty alongside Pierre Gasly. And for the front row for today's sprint race, Fernando Alonso P2 and George Russell in P1. We're just moments away from the start of the F1 sprint, so let's head trackside. Under the lights here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, the fans are ready, the drivers are ready. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go! It is a great start from George Russell who gets away very well, but Fernando Alonso is compromised with the start as the Alpine tries to squeeze George Russell and he does by going around the outside. However, George Russell gets back on the inside and they're going to go to wheel to wheel into the following corner. What will happen here? Will the Alpine give enough space? There's contact between both and it looks like the Alpine of here. Gasly is up to P1 from P3 on the grid. What a great start for him as George Russell has fallen a position. Pierre Gasly struggling a bit through the S's in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, but we see now the onboard of Lando Norris, who's chasing down the Ferrari for another position. He will go down the inside and try to defend off against Yuki Tsunoda. In the Alpha Tower, he'll send the long way around Yuki Tsunoda. Tsunoda holds on, and he is going to get past Lando Norris there, and Yuki finds himself in a very good position at the start of the sprint race. We take a look now at what Pierre Gasly had to do on that start in order to get to P1 as the lights go out. Pierre Gasly gets good reaction time and beats Fernando off the line, which is very rare as Fernando Alonso is really good at those race starts. However, there is contact made at the turn number one that sends Pierre Gasly wide and into the runoff area. He gets challenged by George Russell. Russell trying to hold that outside line. However, he had to give up the space to Pierre Gasly that held the inside line through that tough corner. As we see, Pierre Gasly tries to find momentum and tries to go off to the distance. We take a look at the other side of the story with George Russell. As the lights go out, he has a bit of a wheel spin. And then as we see on the, right around the outside, tries to go Pierre Gasly. Make contact with the side pod George Russell did on that occasion. And as Russell still tries to fight that outside line with Pierre Gasly, as we see, Pierre Gasly has more momentum off the corner as he gets the switchback done. And there is even more contact done into the following quarter. George Russell will surely be on the radio trying to protest that move. And as we see now, Yuki Tsunoda trying to get a move down the outside of Lando Norris. It seems like Yuki has found that extra bit of grip around the outside in the banking corner. And as we see there, wheel to wheel. Great racing we're seeing here in Jeddah. But Yuki Tsunoda has that bit more of pace and gets around Lando Norris for another position. It's a three car battle for P4 as Max Verstappen gets sandwiched in the middle. Yuki Tsunoda goes down the inside for more positions. He's trying to stick it around. Before we got cut off there, it seems like Yuki Tsunoda has completed the move around the outside. However, Max Verstappen is complaining of power loss. Looking into the helmet cam that has been provided for every single driver on the F1 grid as we see Yuki Tsunoda doing a two for one brave move down the inside of Max Verstappen who tries to leg break but can't keep hold. 
of that position due to the loss of power in his Red Bull powertrain engine. Alexander Albon is in for his stops and it seems like he has some wing damage as the Williams pit crew will try their fastest to repair that broken front wing. And as we see, this isn't the fastest of stops as Alexander Albon is now released and is in back into the sprint race, but that's going to cost him a lot of time. That's a 9.7 pit stop from the Williams team. We now get some footage of Alex Albon's onboard as we see he goes through the banking section. However, oh, he just loses the car. Very tricky conditions there for Alex Albon as the banking corner can be very tricky if the car is not set up the right way and almost cost Sergio Perez there on that occasion. Mercedes powered engine versus Mercedes engine and we'll see which one comes on top and it looks like it's the constructor team. Mercedes with George Russell down the inside and is trying to hang out with Fernando Alonso trying to get in that position but it seems like he can't quite hold on and Fernando Alonso once again with the defense is holding on. Charles Leclerc has been a duel with Max Verstappen who has some power loss and is still P5 Charles Leclerc as they head down the straight. He will have the DRS and as we see here and in turn Max will lose two positions here as Lewis Hamilton tries to go around the outside has the inside curve for turn number two and Max is trying to get back with anything he can with using the battery. But Lewis Hamilton will go around the outside and get the position. Oh, it's key coming for Max Verstappen as Valtteri Bottas is going to gain yet on him. That's not working. It's, it's still broken. Max is still holding on in the sprint race as he's now down to P8. However, Red Bull has not called him in yet. As, as we see Leclerc going down the straight chasing down position but there's a yellow flag in sector one what could it be and Leclerc is still not oh no it is Pierre Gasly who has spun it round and gets recovered quickly back on track luckily for him he has the advantage and so he still continues taking a look at what caused the Pierre Gasly spin and he just got onto the inside curb into turn one causing the Alpine car to spin round instability toward the Alpine driver. And as we take a look at the onboard, it's similar and oh, it looks like he did not hit the curb. It's just a moment of oversteer for the French driver, but luckily he had a big enough gap to recover his position and he did not have any damage. Fernando Alonso continues to chase down George Russell, but however, we have a Sector 2 yellow flag, and a local yellow is out for Carlos Sainz, who has a mechanical problem in the Ferrari. It is yet another. Oh, it is a fire coming out of the back of the Ferrari. Carlos Sainz must get out very quickly. No, Eddie, Eddie, no, 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 no. Carlos Sainz cannot catch a break and has to retire once again due to an engine failure. Part 2 of this battle between Fernando Alonso and George Russell down the straight. George Russell closes out the space but Fernando Alonso goes down the inside, hits the curb a bit, will stick it around the outside against George Russell and gets around the Mercedes. It is just a devastating blow for Max Verstappen on the sprint race as we see Lando Norris. And as well as we see now, Lando Norris is going to get past Max Verstappen down the straight, round the outside, into the braking zone we go, and Lando Norris gets by, pushes a little bit wide Max Verstappen, but Max Verstappen looks like he can get back, he's trying to do whatever he can, however, the compromised engine could not allow him to get more power. And now Sergio Perez is being chased down by Lewis Hamilton with DRS. Lewis Hamilton gets an easy pass, but Perez will still stick it down the inside. No one is giving space. This is a really close battle as we see Perez gets the upper hand against Lewis Hamilton as he stuck it around the outside and is able to get more traction. 
It is a four car battle here for P2 as Fernando Alonso leads the DRS train of George Russell and Yuki Tsunoda. Charlotte Claire right behind as Russell goes around the outside in the DRS zone. Russell finally makes the move stick around Fernando Alonso on lap 16 of 17 in the F1 sprint. It's coming to a close. It's going to come down to the wire here. Who will be able to get on the podium? And it looks like Sonoda is challenging with the DRS. It looks like the Mercedes powered engine of Aston Martin cannot hold on, but Fernando Alonso will do everything in his power to keep it going. And it's Yuki Sonoda is still fighting hard with Al Fernando Alonso. And he will stick it and he will be in front of Yuki Sonoda as Yuki is going to try to recharge it up, try to get another crack at him. Then there's more DRS opportunities for Yuki Sonoda and he's going to recharge his battery and try to get a move done later in the sprint. But Keep in mind that there is very few laps left in the sprint as, oh no, and as we see here, it is Charles Leclerc with an engine failure similar to Carlos Sainz. The Ferrari team is not happy with today's result and it's going to be a double DNF for the Scuderia. No, 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 what happened, what happened, lost power. Yuki Sonoda still trying to fight hard for those last points here in the sprint for the podium. Will he be able to catch up with the DRS? And it seems like he'll try to go around the outside. Double overtake. Yuki Sonoda is trying to move around the outside of Russell. Will he be able to get there? But we don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Pierre Gasly who wins the sprint race and is once again a winner in Formula 1. Yuki Sonoda with a valiant effort for P3 in the sprint. I don't know how I did that. Incredible. This might have not been a Grand Prix victory, but Pierre Gasly will definitely celebrate P1 in the F1 sprint here in round four. What a race that has been produced. And not to mention Yuki Tsunoda's valiant effort to get up to P3, beating the likes of Hamilton and Fernando Alonso on his way to the podium. And well, guys, thank you for watching yet another F1 Fantasy Season race. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on the next one.